Hey, hi, uh, welcome to Everything Embedded. Uh, in this third part of the video, I'll be showing uh, boot to Qt, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, boot to Qt or also called as Qt for device creation, actually running on the Raspberry Pi as well as my television screen as well. So I have managed to create the image as I showed it to you in the last video. So I created the image, I have already put it on the SD card and I have uh, booted my Pi as you can uh, see on the screen now. So that's the default screen which comes up on my Raspberry Pi LCD screen, the small Raspberry Pi which is connected to the LCD. Uh, so I'll, before I actually jump into and show you the screen of uh, demo, let's uh, look at the Qt's website which says boot to Qt software stack. So it is for the developers or even if you are not that technical, I mean if you if you have not used uh, Qt for device creation before and just wondering exactly what it is. So we have created a customized operating system which is provided by Qt. We have inserted it to the Raspberry Pi, we have booted it and if you want to run your own application, you can uh, go on to this website. Uh, I'll provide the link in the description. It is a Qt website, basically it's a, it's a Qt's documentation page. There is a option here called customizing a runtime environment. So if you click on that, and if you scroll down below, there is a section which uh, explains in detail how you can boot to a custom application. So by default, it says, boot to Qt startup screen is configured to run on startup. So that is what you are seeing on the screen now. That is the startup screen, which comes up by default. If you want to make the changes, you can uh, just uh, run this command in the terminal window, or you can also use the menu there, which we'll just explore now. So you can also change the resolution mode. So let's have a look. At the at the at the boot to Qt home page itself, really. So if I click, touch that. So as you can see, it's layout and input, which provides you whether you want to use a mouse, you want to use a touch. At work. So remember, all this which we are getting features are for free. Otherwise, if we were writing our own operating system just using pure Yocto, we will have to write this UI code ourselves. So for example, to list all the Wi-Fi, I'll just click on this. It will show me the list of all the Wi-Fi all the Wi-Fi connections available. So this device can be readily be connected to that. So all those features are provided by Boot to Beauty. We don't have to write any code for that. That code is already there in the system. I'll switch that off and you can set the date of time of the device you can select the languages as well if you want bluetooth support that's also there so if what if i turn it on i'll turn it on it will scan all the bluetooth available in the vicinity it's showing all the televisions whatever is available a couple of samsung televisions are shown here yeah so yeah lots of televisions in my vicinity really are available to connect via bluetooth there are smart tags and everything are available here. So if I scroll down, scroll the list, a lot of televisions here. So I'll switch the Bluetooth off. So remember, this is an operating system created using Meta Boot to Qt in using Yocto. And I've just booted it in Raspberry Pi. What about display? So display, you can specify the physical dimensions and all. And about Qt, just some standard text and finally power off where you can shut down and reboot if you have seen my previous videos uh, where i showed you how to create your own custom operating system you know, called as coffee place that also had the menu of shutdown and reboot so now you can basically uh, relate to what i was trying to do in that particular project where i was creating my own embedded linux distribution and with my own UI. So this is what it is. It's very similar to that, but of course on a much, much higher scale as it has been created by a large team. But if you want to create your own, uh, you can do it as well. So let's go back again to the main menu and just see some application in action. 
so i don't know i'll just show because i'm also going to show this on the television as well so it does not make sense to actually repeat it but just for the sake of uh, completion uh, i'll just show that it scrolls and everything and uh, since there is no audio connected to this i'll just uh, maybe launch uh, this e-bike demo so remember boot to qt is also used for example if you are writing a software for the uh, for the treadmills uh, for the modern treadmills where they have those fancy displays so this can be written for uh, those kind of device for those kind of equipment as well so like something like an e-bike so let's start the e-bike demo so next time when you go to your gym so when you are seeing on the display so possibly it has been written in possibly it has been written in qt if it has a fancy display and other fancy inputs so yeah as you can see it works charmingly very well and although my iphone can't capture the screen resolution and the display quality and everything it looks fantastic in the real life you should definitely try to build this image yourself and try it out okay, so i'll just close this go back again to the main screen and finally i'll just play a video here so let's see although there is no audio in this as i said but it plays uh, flawlessly no problems there i have not connected any audio device to my raspberry pi as it should have worked and uh, yeah i'll go back to the desktop screen now i'll just close this So let's go back to the home screen and coming back to the website now booting to a custom application so yeah here you can uh, read whatever customizations you want to do you can launch your own applications you can configure the display resolutions and uh, there is section for raspberry pi which you want to switch to portrait and landscape use depending on your device whether you are installing boot to qt on a treadmill or maybe on a in in a new generation of ovens fridge or whatever equipment you plan to do really so it is quite flexible operating system so yeah i think it is an interesting thing and just i'll take go back to the screen so again here so this is the main page of uh, qt4 device it's a, of course it's a commercial offering but we can download the source code and build it ourselves as long as we keep it to ourselves it should not be a problem well, the entire source is available for free it's just an open source thingy and yeah so just go through this page if you want to do that okay so i have connected the raspberry pi uh, to the to my 65 inch television screen and i'll play some video here and you can make it out yourself uh, how it sounds like and uh, what it looks like as you can see the default the embedded Linux image generated for QT4 device creation. It plays the media without any hiccups or without any problems on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, absolutely no problem really. So if you are planning to write a software for your own uh, setup boxes or other kind of media players, this should uh, just work for you. So I am using a USB remote control which has been connected to the Raspberry Pi to control the screen. Okay, so that was the end of the video. I'll try to play some uh, 
so select some other app maybe i'll see what are the what is other thing which i can quickly display so it has web browser example as well and again these are the settings which you previously saw when the pi was connected to the lcd screen the small lcd screen so the same thing here language bluetooth display options about qt the power options shutdown or reboot and again going back to network i'll turn the wi-fi on and you can see all the wi-fi which are available in my vicinity so yeah it seems to work without any problems hopefully you like this uh, video about uh, your demo for uh, qt for device creation and i will see you in the next video thank you bye bye